Notice anything different on your favorite websites today? A spinning wheel icon, perhaps? It's all part of an online protest by dozens of companies urging regulators to tweet treat all web traffic equally. Welcome to your Wednesday lunch break, everyone. I'm Tanya Rivero. The internet isn't actually any slower today, but websites like Etsy, Netflix, and Reddit are urging us all to pay attention to the issue of net neutrality. In 2010, the FCC passed rules saying all content streamed over the internet should be treated equally, but this May, the FCC proposed changes that would allow broadband providers to control internet speeds. For a closer look, we're joined by Evan Greer, campaign director of Fight for the Future, one of the main organizers behind today's Internet Slowdown Day. Evan, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. So, Evan, I mentioned earlier Netflix and Reddit are part of this protest. How big is the scope of your protest so far? This is really spreading like wildfire across the Internet today. Uh, and many of your viewers, you know, have probably already seen these spinning icons, whether they, you know, watched a video on Netflix this morning, headed over to Reddit to check some news, um, Mozilla, Etsy, Kickstarter, Vimeo, um, so many household names are participating today. And the reason for that is because these sites know that their users deeply care about an internet that is about more than just delivering content from a few select corporations. It's about a diversity of perspective in an even playing field where everyone has a voice. The debate over net neutrality certainly seems to hit a nerve with the general public when explained. Here's a recent clip from John Oliver's HBO show where he talks about net neutrality. Recently, Comcast was negotiating with Netflix. This graph shows Netflix download speeds on various providers. That black line plummeting downwards was their speed on Comcast during the negotiation. See if you can guess when Netflix agreed to Comcast demands. I'll give you a hint, it's right there. <laughs> that has all the ingredients of a mob shakedown. Oh. Netflix, nice show about life in a lady's prison. Such a shame if there was going to be something happen to your connection there. <laughs> well, I'll leave it to John Oliver. That clip generated over a million comments crashing the FCC's website. What are you hearing from Internet users? People are outraged at the prospect that the Internet could be divided up into a fast lane and slow lane where websites that can afford to pay for the privilege of reaching their audience would basically be able to reach the most people, while the rest of us, all of that weird, interesting, alternative, informative content that makes the internet so much cooler than mainstream cable TV would be relegated to a slow lane, which is basically tantamount to censorship. Well, I think most of us have, go ahead. Sorry, let me ask you something about the big sites like the Facebooks and the Googles. Are they coming out as strongly in opposition to this, or do you think they could be doing more? You know, I think there's always room for everyone to do more. Um, and, but what's important here today is lots of people are going to be talking about the big websites participating. Lots of people are going to be talking about the hundreds of thousands of phone calls and emails that Congress and the FCC is going to be receiving today. Um, but the real story here is about the Internet coming together to defend itself something that it's proven time and time again it's capable of doing. And so those who seek to restrict, to threaten, and to undermine the internet as a platform for free speech should take heed um, that it's very difficult to overcome the free and democratic nature of the internet. Uh, let, me, let me ask you something, because it seems to me that the internet today is as much a public utility as television and radio. So what's the problem with regulating it like a utility? You're absolutely right. I mean, people rely on the internet for everything, whether it's looking for a job, going to school, accessing health benefits. Uh, we use the internet and we expect it to be there the same way we, re we rely on water or electricity. It's the FCC's job to protect the internet in the public interest. That's what they are supposed to do. Um, and if they were doing their job, we would be done. We this fight would be won. Um, but the problem here is that the FCC is instead pushing a proposal that benefits a select few cable companies at the expense of everyone else. And on Tuesday, Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Patrick Leahy and House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi took steps to push back against the FCC's uh, plan. And a hearing is set for next week. So how soon is a resolution expected or could this drag on for months? So the next comment deadline for the FCC is September 15th, which is why we launched battleforthenet.com 
um, and did the protest today. We wanted to really give people a chance to get their voices heard. Um, but the reality is this is probably going to drag on for a little while. We're going to be looking at a decision on this by the end of the year. And that's basically how long the FCC has to decide whether they're going to listen to the overwhelming public outcry on this or whether they're going to expose themselves as a government agency that has no legitimacy left. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today, Evan. Thanks for having me.